once again good morning for everyone and welcome to our webinar for up, uh, which is an update progress to your plan with Astra Power Project. Today, uh, me, uh, Akman Jah Hamraj from Future Network, uh, Future Network De Development and Mr. Chris Ray from Electrosoft Astra will be presenting webinar. Future Network Development is an uh, authorized uh, distributor of Astra Power Project in more than 80 countries. First of all, in, uh, let me introduce to you to Astra Power Project. Power project. <coughs> it's launched uh, almost 30 years ago and it is powerful project portfolio and resource management solution used by large small business businesses and it's preferred software of thousands of construction professionals. <coughs> Why you you choose uh, Asta Power Project? It is easy to use, but extremely powerful. Superior presentation of project plans and simpler printing. Cost-effective licensing options. Enterprise option for multi-user, multi-project, and real-time access. Easily integrates with Asta other uh, softwares such as ERP uh, softwares, and also affordable for the planning. Link project plans uh, to 3D models within single application. Uh, here you can see some of our project where Asta Power Project used and implemented One, uh, London Eye, Jumeirah Park, Hong Kong Airport, Petronas Towers, Warsaw Metro uh, Line and others. Here you can see some of our customers, uh, which extremely using is the Asta Project and uh, chose Asta Project as the one of the uh, main uh, project management tool. There are Strabag, Bam, Skanska, Hotdev, Astaldi, Brookfield, and Foster Partners and Maze. Uh, let me quickly also go to some of our study cases, which uh, may be interested for you. For you, uh, one of the uh, study cases which uh, where we uh, we use as the power project is a, it is the shard or vertical city in London. It's the tallest building in Western Europe, and uh, as the power project was chosen by main contractor, Mainz. Uh, to help them drive the innovative solutions required in this project. Second one is the Durban International Airport. Uh, Fox uh, Project Management uh, chose us the power project for construction project uh, to help uh, project manage the relocation of entire international airport in South Africa. Uh, this, uh, uh, the following study is about Goldrich. Goldrich is using Astra Power Project and uh, in several projects. One of them is a Goldrich BKC is a project and BK, Goldrich BKC is one of the biggest commercial projects in India and it was integrated by Bill Gates. Bill Gates. Uh, following is a furnace fabric in India Ltd. Furnace Fabric is one of the world's, uh, world's leading engineering procurement and construction companies specializing in oil and gas industry. As per project is used by them for uh, domestic and overseas projects such as Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited uh, or Lambian Energy Systems and other projects. Uh, Today uh, we will be speaking about uh, more about uh, how to update uh, progress to your project plan and here uh, site progress mobile will help you. Site progress mobile, why? You progress your access schedules, rely on these updates by email, phone calls, collect in person by walking the site or writing notes experienced any uh, frustrations with this process, wrong progress periods, or having multiple uh, sources version control. So, 
If you have this kind of problems, Site Progress Mobile will help you. Site Progress uh, Mobile gives you to record project uh, progress quickly and easily via mobile devices. Update progress at any time from any location. You will need a signal only for submi submitting updates. Updates no, no longer rely on papers or emails that uh, re-create manual into project plans. Uh, record actual dates for events, not just percentage complete. Also, you can take uh, notes, photographs, which can be associated with the particular tasks or build stages. Available on Android, iOS or Windows devices. Here you can see a cyclic reporting process. Uploading uh, 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 task project progress records progress submitting and synchronizing reschedule. Mr. Chris Ray will be presenting uh, more detailed uh, this cycle uh, reporting process. <coughs> Before going to a live demonstration, I, I would like to mention that we have a now promotion which is a Access Site Progress Mobile for free if you buy five or more Astapor project licenses. Any Astapor project, standalone or enterprise. To find out more, call us or uh, email at email to us, sales at fnsite.com. Now I, I will give you uh, present rights to Mr. Grace and he will be presenting. Hello, Chris. Hi there. Here you are. Please show us how to update uh, pro uh, progress to our project data. Okay. Um, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Excellent. Okay. Well, thank you very much. You. Right. Yes. Yeah, so this morning or today what we're going to do is we're going to look at progress entry within Aster Power Project. And we're starting off with a very, we look at a blank project here just to show you um, the levels of progress. Now, I'm just going to put in a very simple project to start with. Um, I have a number of tasks with a number of durations in there. Um, link those together and reschedule those so we're now in a position to see a very simple project for entering progress. Now Power Project allows you to enter progress in a number of ways. In a very simple way, a way through to uh, complex levels of progress entry as required. So we're going to first of all start off by entering simple percent complete, um, but you can move all the way up to entering um, actual efforts, um, actual costs against each activity to roll up the task to see the level of progress that is on there. <clears throat> now on the screen here I have a very simple program. I'm going to, I have a progress period line, my data line here, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to change that line to the end of the week, showing you where I should be progressed up to. I can simply add a column in now to show my progress percent complete in there. And if I wanted to, I could enter the progress directly into there. Um, one of the other features we've got in very simple progress is I have the ability to enter in um, a plan percent complete column which without any baselines, without any other functionality in the software, um, is now allowing me to see how much I should have done um, on those particular activities. So when I want to enter progress, I can simply type in my progress percent complete. So if I wanted to, I might say I've only done 50% of that activity. And the plan percent complete is telling me where I should be up to that line. And all, all I've done is 50% of work, and that's maybe all I've done. Now what I choose is when I redo a reschedule in Power Project, I get an option for my progress period warning. Now in here I have the option to either not straighten the line or straighten the line to whichever line I'm choosing. And I'll come into that in a bit more. Um, 
Here, if I choose none and click on OK, it will leave the line jagged to show you where the tasks are and the jagged and progress lines show where I'm actually progressed up to. If I reschedule again, but this time to actually choose progress entry period and then click on OK, it will take the progress I've done in the week I've done and then straighten the line for that and then push in all remaining work out so I can see where I am in that project. Now notice when I do that, um, the progress updates because now the program has been readjusted. The percent, plan percent complete is looking at the live project and saying where I am and where I'm expected to be. So if I undo that for a moment and take off the progress again on there, and what this time I'm doing, before I start any progress in there, I'm going to simply go into my baseline manager and create a new baseline. And this is our planned project. I'll close on that. As you notice now, that, in, that installs and shows a baseline task underneath. You can create as many baselines as you want. And I, I can also make sure that my column now is pointing to my baseline. So this plan percent complete is pointing there. If we repeat the process and say I, I should have done 50, I've done 50 percent, I should have done 100. If I then go into my reschedule and choose to straighten the line as I did before, the baseline now stays where it is. The project life project is straightened, but the plan percent complete is telling me where I should have been on my original program. So I can very clearly see um, where I am and where I should have been in here, and this shows me in my columns. Now, what I'm going to do is that's just a very simple me method of entering progress. If I undo that and remove the progress again from my project, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply take it a step further. And again, with using Power Project, different companies choose the different levels of entry and progress. You may just want your resources and people just to start to go in and enter progress as a, as a percentage and that's it. Or you may want a level more level of complexity, increasing with the baseline, straighten the line. And also we have the option inside Power Project not just to have a single progress period, and so rather than calling that, I can say that was week one. Oops. Week one, I can have week two, week three, week four, and I can have as many of these as I want. And if I switch back to Power Project, I'm now displaying, as you can see at the top here, it's telling me I'm displaying the week, week one. So now in there, if I do my, the similar as I did before, instead in the first week I did 50%, and if I straighten that line, now I'm just going to choose it to the progress entry period, which is whatever period is set there. That straightens the line in there. I then come along and say we're now in week two, and as soon as I choose week two, the line gets removed and the new line gets put in for week two. My plan percent complete columns now tell me how much I should have done, and if I say that I've done, 100% of that. Do notice here now that the actual progress on the task is actually highlighted in the color of the progress period line. So this allows me to see how much I've actually got um, progress and where it was done. I can then say I've done also 50% on that, reschedule that, just leaving it as straight in the line, and it then updates in that line there. So I can see on week on week, and as I go into week three, I can see I can go into there, and I can now say that I've done 75% of that. And what's interesting here is I've actually done 50% of task three. So I've started task three out of sequence from my original plan. But that doesn't matter. Power Project will allow you to do that. And when I reschedule that, it then readjusts the links around the completed sections leaving the work where it was placed. Now, as part of this, I've now got this record of history inside my project of how much progress was done. So I can, if I wanted to, from a reporting side, add a column called progress a period, and I can say that's week one, and choose it to report against week one. I can click on add, and I can say that's week two, Choose week two, click on add, 
which is week three, and week three. And when I close on that, that tells me how much progress I did on a weekly basis. Now, I don't need to display these, but at any time I can add these onto my display for reporting purposes to very simply see how I can progress my um, my project and how it was progressed historically. This is not using baselines. I can baseline every week um, if I wanted to, but I can actually have a percent complete and a plan percent complete, a progress at period for the relevant for each of the periods I've got. Now what this enables me to do is if I just again update my undo my progress so it's back to here. Even if I did chose not to reschedule it uh, and straighten the line, so if I said I did 50% in week one and I did nothing else, and then if I rescheduled, but this time made sure that was none, so it stays as jagged line. But then what I allow me to do is I can say in week two, I can say that I did 100% and I did 20% there. Week three. I did 80% and 10% and I did week 4, I did 100% and I did 50%. So you can see even though I haven't moved my activities, I can still have that recorded information of how much progress I've done for each of the periods and it can be displayed on screen very simply. So it's just one way of um, looking at my progress and so I've updated that in there. Now what I can also do is when I'm entering progress we have a number of options and again with Power Project the progress you can very simply enter progress and update or if you have complex requirements you can progress in that way. So we have a number of options for progressing. We're, we're, we're progressing um, in steps um, but what I can do is I can fill the progress line in here and I can update via duration remaining if I wanted to. Um, and if I can change the method I'm, I'm entering progress, I'm just going to choose this one at the moment. So what this allows me to do is inside the software, I can actually add a column in under progress called duration remaining. And then when I start a task off, so I say I've done 10%, it progresses up to the line with three days remaining. In there I can say I've done 10% of that one as well, that progress to the line. I reschedule that so and straighten that into my progress period and then when I come to week two, all I now do is now I've started some tasks, that task there I say how many days left? Well I've only have two days left to do next week. So I say two days it automatically completes to that line. This one I can say I need actually five days to do. And it progresses that line. I reschedule that project and you can see there. So week on week it will now fill to the line and fill that period just working on remaining duration for each of my um, activities that have started that are in progress. So very quickly we can see this information. And obviously if we wanted to, in here, I can at any point under my format chart, if I wanted to, display, I move that there, multiple lines at the same time on screen. So very quickly I can get that detailed. Now if you don't like looking at the multicolored items in there, just turn it back, I can set them to all black. So I can choose to that. You'll notice here that where I progressed it, it has a split inside it because I did that piece in that week, I did that piece in that week. If I wanted to, I can choose not to show those splits. So I can show it as a complete task, fill in the gaps. Again, so it's all about how you want it to be displayed, how you want to enter progress. And you can choose the, whether, whether it be a complex level or a very simple way of entering progress. So in here we've created these lines and you would just continue to create those lines in progress. Now, if I just remove that out of screen, one of the other features we have inside here, inside Power Project, if I just set my, my progress back to week one, 
is that Power Project has a functionality to allow you to draw an activity, but also to draw additional activities on the same line. So these can be multiple stages of a build, these can be procurement stages, design stages. What I'm going to say here is that very simply these are different build stages of a house, and I'm going to say that that's the foundation work, just that. Uh, that's my DPC, I've got some drainage, I've got some brickwork, and I've got some roof in there. So very quickly I can have a house on one line, and if I wanted to I can have as multiple stages. There's no limit to the number of activities that I can have. Uh, and I can have those and I can have those on screen. Now, if I wanted to, that might be plot one. I can actually have multiple of those, just remove those blank lines I created earlier, and if I wanted to, I can link those houses together, reschedule there to show a my critical path going through the project, but when the relevant stages are being done on my house. Now I've done that, I can see a total duration of those. Um, if I go into week two, that will start to give me an, a view of how much and where I should be. So what I'm going to do here is I can actually just select that and so select that in there and just say that that's 100% complete, which works out to be 12.5% at the overall <coughs> Um, plot. If I wanted to, I could click on the plus and see the different stages in there. And if I wanted to there, I could then quite happily um, enter progress in these columns, saying I've done 10% and so forth in there. And then doing a reschedule once I've rolled it up to see the impact on that. And again, if I baseline that, that would show me my comparisons. And if I show that with um, if I showed that with my multiple lines, I could see the different colorings and shadings on there. So if I went back to format bar chart, I could make sure that was colored. So I could see that. So I could see where the progress was done week by week inside there. So let me just turn my options back off again. Filter line, take that off. And come up. Set that to zero, that to zero, back again. And now in here, if I enter my progress without those fill lines in there, I can say that that's 10%. I can say that one was 20% done. And then I could reschedule that. Just updating it, leaving it in the week it was done, and allow me to report it, seeing the progress of the overall activities. So again, very quickly can be done. If I undo those, just remove those again, undo them back to nothing. And again, in here, what I'm going to do is if I have task 1, task 2, task 3, in here, I have a duration of each of these. I summarize those. Uh, so I'll link them, then summarize them, and I'm going to summarize this as phase one. When I reschedule them, that puts it in place. And I'm just going to very briefly just point that to the live project for the moment in there. And now when I enter progress against this, if I so I'm entering progress against um, week two, this shows me how much progress I should on each task, but also rolls that value up so I can get a summarized version of my progress. As I enter progress against each of these activities, and say I did 50% there, that 50% actually equates to 16.5%, just over of that task. I can then choose to progress the remainder of those in there. And I will just remove my options. Again, just once more in there, because I ended those. So let's just do the 50%. And you can see it progresses up there. And then when I reschedule it, it still shows me, and as I've extended it, it gives me an update version of that. 
But the progress of the summary means that if I only look at the summary, I can see how much progress I've done as I've gone through. Now, this is all very good and very easy to report on in your project. What I can do with progress as well, if I um, come out of that, again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put task one in, task two in, task three in, put some durations of those in, in there, link those together, tell it I'm on week one, reschedule that. So that's my project. I can save this to my desktop as simple project and that's placed in there. I can also choose to export this information out um, to site as to site progress which is for the mobile applications. So this allows you to use either an Android, an Apple or a Microsoft um, device and if you have none of those you can actually use a web page to go straight into to progress. Once I've done this I close this down. With site progress or with the deal we have at the moment, if you buy Power Project 5 licenses, you can use site progress for free. Um, you get to install an application onto your machine, which is the After Site Progress Manager, which you're given a username and password, which are the ones you type in to log in. And inside here, you can set up the users. So although you you have purchases and you get a username to log into this, from here on, you can type in as many users as you want um, in here. I can choose my projects, so I can add a project in, so if I just go to my desktop, there's my simple project. I can choose the default login details of that project and apply that. And then I can go to access, assign access, and I can choose my project. And in here, it opens up. And I have a program, I don't have any further structure in there, and I can assign Bob to that and apply that so he's working on all of that. Now if I go back to my projects and for an example here I add a new project in and I'm just going to add in from my documents as to power project projects and I have a two-story office book example in there, apply that, go to my assign access, choose that two-story office book example and you can see here, there's a whole structure within the project. And I've, I'm choosing here to, if I assign none, there, so just apply that. There is no one assigned to that. I can choose to assign Bob to either the whole thing, just the construction, or just one of the sub-stages. So I might say, Bob's working on sites and establishments. Chris is going to be working on superstructure. Ray is going to be working on that, but Bob's also going to do services and include all of the items underneath. So I can choose to see allocated on those. With those allocated, I apply that. I can then go to my jobs and I can choose the jobs that are ready to export. And you can see there's the untitled, which is my simple project. And then I have three exports for the two-story office block project. One for Bob, one for Chris, one for Ray. Now each of those people have their own mobile devices. They will be able to open those up. So I'm going to here, I'm going to say, all of these are going to be exported out. And I'm going to choose, I'm going to, when I'm exporting, I'm in progress in this too. And let's just choose the 3rd of July as the progress date here. And then when I can choose to export, Baseline. So I have my, that's because I created the baseline earlier in there. So I have exported my projects in, um, in there. Uh, let's just get in here. And I can choose to export those out and export there. I'm soon to have a connection issue here. But I can still show you the progress here. Now, I have a mobile app here, and this is linked to a phone I have linked on there. And there you see the two 
projects that have been exported out um, in their untitled and two-story office block. If I click on untitled, that will download the project into my um, device. Once it's downloaded to my device, I'm entering progress. I can disconnect from the internet. And in here, I can see the tasks. So that I've only got task one, two, and three. Task one is behind schedule. That's on schedule, and that should be being done this week. And these are ahead of schedule. So you can choose the colors for the settings of these in there. So I'm saying task one. I can add some notes if I wanted to. And here I've chosen some predefined ones, or I can enter some free entry ones in there. I can even take a picture or multiple pictures of the piece of work I'm looking at and actually bring that through so I can actually see that and report that. So I can do that. And then when I'm entering progress against that item, I can progress it like this. So this is just my finger dragging along in there. Say how much I've done. I've also have the ability to say give it an actual start and a remaining duration as well. And once I've done that, I can save that. And then up here, I can just choose to go to the next activity and repeat the process of how much it should be. And then save on that. Once I've finished on that, I'll update that. And then again, if I send submit it back to the cloud, then it's no longer a project I can edit inside my device. So during the week, I'll have that, and I only submit it at the end of the week. Now, if I go into two-story office block, you can see that in here, I have site establishment and services. They're the two sections I chose to export. And again, in here, you can see I have a whole range of activities, all with red against them. So these are overdue activities. Now, you don't have to have this color. You can choose not to export the color out there. So it's all down to you. And free entry, I can use either that or do free notes and um, type in whatever I want. I have no notes at the moment. Take pictures. Enter the progress against those. And once I've done that, I can save that and s submit that back. Now, once I've submitted those back, I can go back into Power Project, and you can see in the Site Progress Manager, and I have two jobs that I can re-import back into Power Project. And I can choose those two ones, and I can then choose to what date I'm reporting to, which is the 3rd of July. Um, I can choose to import those. They're now all imported. If I go back to Power Project and I open up my simple project, there's the progress I've just entered on my um, site progress mobile. And if I open the other one, I would have the same. <coughs> so I have the ability to enter progress very simply on a project. That project progress can be entered by multiple people, so the relevant people to that. And it keeps track of that. And all I would do then is the next week, I would go back into ready to export, choose which files I want to export, choose the new date, and run an export. So this could be done by a per person on your machine, or you might have an administrator where it links to all the project files um, on the network and exports that data out. If you have Asta Power Project Enterprise, you will be able to export that information out from there. So you have all of that available to you. Now, what I would want to do is here, if I just go back into my projects, I'm just going to click on Add and open a house build sample in there. Go to my Apply. Go to Access and my house build. In there, I've got my new build it's assigned to Bob in there. I'm going to my Jobs and just refresh that. Just find Bob to all that. There's my house build one. If I choose my house build example and I choose to export that. Now, before I go any further, 
if I just um, open up um, my documents and open up that house build project, that house build sample, you can see here that this project has multiple plots on it, plot 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These ones have some progress on them. Some of them are overlapping. This is all allowed within Power Project in there. If I close that down, now if I go back to my mobile device, refresh, there's my house build sample project. And in here, I've got two different workflows I can have. I have my pre-construction, pre-site work, um, and my typical houses. If I go into my typical houses, I've got my new build houses. And this is my turnaround document, which just means single activities that are non-repetitive and non-staged um, non activities. Or I can go into what we call our timesheet, and I can look at a particular plot, and I can say, look, I'm looking at plot four, and I can either do some work on each of these items. And if you look here, this these works here, this is foundations, DPC, drainage, brickwork one. If I go back to power project and my recent house build, this is, if I look in the new build section, this is my foundation, DPC, drainage, brickwork one, brickwork two, and so forth that's in there. And I'm looking at plot four, so I look in there. And that's saying I'm reporting on that of how much work I've done. So if I switch back to the mobile device, in here what I can say is that I can say, well actually, either I can say part of that's done in there, or if I scroll down and say I've completed up to brickwork one, and I can, that will progress everything in there. I can take pictures, I can do all the normal stuff, all the notes and so forth. Well, I'm doing it against each stage. I can save that, upload that information back to the project, and you'll notice in here, stage four has no progress. Close that down. Go back into my site progress app. Choose to say ready to import. House build is ready to come back in. And then I just import that in with a particular date. And inside Power Project, when the user opens it inside Power Project, in there, you'll now see that I have progress assigned against that particular period in there. That I've heard. And this line I've got drawn here has been automatically generated by Site Progress, so you don't even have to go in and create your own lines. If you have one on that date, it will use it. If you don't, it will create your Site Progress line for the particular date. So very quickly, well, it will allow you to see this information. Okay, so that's site progress. Um, very simple to use. It's the kind of thing that we have a simple 10 minute demo video when you purchase that you shows you how it works. So if I close down my projects there, um, and the one final thing that we, we're gonna show you now with um, producing S-curve, progress S-curve reports in Power Project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose to open up my two-story office block in there. I'm going to go inside my um, format side and there are no baselines at the moment so let's just create a baseline for this project. That's quickly created a baseline. As I say, you can create as many baselines as you want. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a few changes to my project, a few delays to my project, just so we can see any impacts. If I do those, and then if I do a reschedule, we should be able to see that as we go down, there's a difference in my project and baseline or where it's sitting inside there. So if I close that down. Now what I'm going to do is now I've got that in place, I can go into the project tab at the top and choose to do the earn value analysis um, report, the EVA re reporter. 
when I choose the UVA reporter, that will allow me to open up in here. I can choose next. Now, the advantage with the UVA reporter is in a lot of software that produces S curves, you need to cost load your project or resource load your project. And if you've done that, this will allow you to report on it. But if you haven't done that, you can simply open your project up, choose the duration option, and it will produce S curves for your project. It also means that you could fairly simply export out from XCR and so forth and bring it into PowerPoint and run an S curve to it, just making sure you have a baseline. So what I'm going to do is I have duration set in here. I'm going to next. I could group it by each individual code library, so for example, trade, to see how each trade is performing. I'm not going to at the moment. Next on that, I get to choose my as soon as possible baseline as my latest possible baseline. If I don't have my as latest possible baseline, then I don't have to worry. I just need to have one baseline in there. I next on that, I can choose the scope of this report. Do I want everything where I'm in, the whole thing? So I'm going to say current view, which is what I'm looking at. Next on that, and then I'm going to finish on that. And what that's going to do in the background is that's now running analysis on my project, doing any temporary reschedules it needs to, to work out the values and placements of my activities. And as it runs through there, it's doing the it's generating this data um, that I can then use as an S-curve. It almost becomes part of the process that you can do this every week. As a standard, we have a number of clients now that export this as a standard report to management along with their project plan and drop line report. So it's a very simple way to see things. So it's now writing the data into Excel. So it uses Excel as a generator for here. Um, and there we go, we have complete. And there is my report. And you can see I have an S-curve. This is using an Excel template. So I could open that template up, put my own logos in there, make it and choose anything I wanted to. Gives me the details of what I've chosen and gives me my S-curve of where I am, of where I'm planned to be. And the actuals would appear over here. That's my actuals, just very small at the moment. It gives me some basic earn value amounts, so budget at completion, planned at completion, um, earn value at report date, um, cost at report date. So if I do have costs, I can see that. I can also see report settings that I ran it on, and also it gives me an explanation of what earn value is, so how the concepts work, what the graph is telling you of how it's working and they're inside every report we do. If you report on what project that has multiple progress periods, it will give you a variance per progress period. So it's a very simple way of entering progress. And I could get this out of it even if I'm doing my simple level of progress. So that's really the entry in progress side. Uh, if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer that. We have about 10 minutes or so available. Hello, Chris. Yes, <clears throat> there is a question from Ian. <clears throat> He's asking, what happens if on a line with many tasks, you skip any task and progress a task ahead of sequence? How is this that shown? Okay, so if I had um, multiple tasks on the line, like so, if I reschedule that um, in place, let's zoom in on it so we can see more. Now, perhaps it allows you, there's a number of, depending on your options you use, but I'm just going to set this now to the end of the week, for example, and I can say this task here. I did a bit of. Um, this task here I did um, a bit of as well. So I've done a bit of both of those. Now it can't give me a jagged line because it doesn't know where the jagged line should be, or even if I turn off critical here, because I'm out of sequence progress. But if I then reschedule that and straighten the line, it leaves the completed sections where they are 
and moves the remaining forward. So just the same way it would do if you progress out a sequence on a normal line, but actually it deals with it quite happily on a multiple task line. Hopefully that answers the question. Thank you, please. Uh, dear Atini, do you have any questions? You can type to question section to on go to uh, go to webinar. I think, Chris, there is no other questions. Excellent. Thank you very much. For well, thank you very much. So if anyone has, please contact FND. Um, I know the meeting's being recorded, so that will be available to people to view. And if you have any further questions, let us know. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chris. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.